Hi, I'm Jenny Evans, and I'm a resiliency expert, a speaker, author, and an executive coach. And for over 25 years, I've worked with leaders at Yale School of Management, Nationwide, CVS, Deloitte, Kraft Heinz, Target, JP Morgan Chase, and I've helped them to really amp up their resilience and optimize their mindset. And probably more importantly, in many cases, have helped them to dramatically shift and change the way that they work and live. I've helped people find the confidence that they've always been looking for. I've helped people save their marriages and relationships with their kids. I've helped them to change the way they prioritize their health, to find work-life balance, or to really advance in their careers. And what's really helped me guide not only my clients, but myself through my work and my life are five big life lessons that I've learned that highly influence the way I coach and the way I speak to my audiences. And I wanna share these five big life unlocks with you today so that you can get all the benefit without having to go through the pain, the suffering, the time, and the effort that it took me to learn these. So let's dive into number one. Here's a picture of me when I was three years old. Those are stitches in my head, and it happened two other times before the age of five. When I did reach the age of five, I had to rock these corrective shoes. They were the only shoes that I could wear. Let's just say I was not the most coordinated kid on the block. I think it just goes without saying that like in high school, I was not really athletic either. And once I got to college though, I started teaching fitness classes and that's when I started to develop my physical strength. And not long after that, I also started doing flying trapeze, which scared the bejesus out of me, but I started to realize, you know, if, if I can do those things that are really physically uncomfortable, that also scare the crap out of me, I can do just about anything. And what it helped me to realize is confidence is the transfer of belief from one area of our lives to another. My confidence has a very strong physical foundation, but as I just shared with you, I didn't have a strong physical foundation growing up, but take the confidence that you have in a skill or an area of your life. Like maybe you are an awesome cook. Maybe you're really good at music. You pick up language really well. You are really proud of the way you parent. You're really good at fixing things. Take that confidence that you have and start applying it and laying it over other areas of your life. It's a game changer. Before we move on to point number two, I have a question for you. Did you ever, as a kid, say something in class that cracked the entire class up? How did you interpret that experience? Maybe the story that you created was oh my God, I am so embarrassed. Everybody's looking at me. Everybody's laughing at me. I hate this. I'm so uncomfortable. I'm never doing it again. And you become more introverted. Or maybe the story that you created when people laughed at you was, <laughs> oh my God, that felt good. That was so awesome. I can't wait to do that again at every opportunity and you now become the class clown. Both of these are stories that you could have created around the exact same set of facts and circumstances. It is not so much about what happens to us in our lives. It's the stories that we create about what happens. We know based on current psychological research that these stories are extremely powerful because the more we repeat these stories, either internally to ourselves or we say them out loud, it creates neural pathways in our brain. It actually changes the function and structure of our brains. And we have 
millions of stories around every aspect of our lives, whether we work out or not, uh, whether we drink or smoke, how we prioritize our day, stories around whether we work long hours, how we parent, how we show up in our romantic relationships. And some of these stories are a reflection of the truth. They're aligned with our values and they take us where we want to go in our lives. But all of us, including me, <laughs> have stories where we will distort the truth and the facts. These stories are not really aligned with our values and our beliefs. And these stories become the brick wall, the, the blockade of why we can't take action or stop doing something that we know isn't right. We're the authors of our life stories and we have to be very conscious and intentional about the stories that we create. When I was in my early 30s, I was a brand new mom and my career was taking off and I really thought that my life's purpose was to try to just help and better the lives of as many people as I possibly could. And I was traveling and speaking and I was on the road a lot. And luckily I had a life-changing conversation with someone that helped me to realize that my purpose was actually to influence the most important person in my life. And that was my daughters. And this conversation completely shifted the way I organized and prioritized my entire life. So I decided that I was only going to be available to travel and speak every other week, which means I said no to a lot of money and a lot of opportunities, but it was an easy choice. I was 100% confident in organizing my life this way. And this really helped to teach me that purpose is the answer key to life. When you are clear on your purpose, you become clear on everything, your priorities, your decisions, who and what gets your time, energy and effort and who and what does not. And there's bonuses to being clear on your purpose that it improves your resilience, your longevity, your health, your focus, your productivity. It is the answer key to every question, every decision, your whole life. On to life unlock number four, I used to do flying trapeze and anytime I was learning a brand new trick or trying something out of safety lines, I would turn to the person who was up on the, the trapeze board with me and I would say, yeah, what's the worst that could happen? And then I would laugh and I would take off. Okay, the worst that could happen is I could die, I could get paralyzed, I could get seriously hurt, or everything could totally go well because I had been practicing for these things. Our brain is hardwired to always assume the worst in great detail, but it rarely ever happens. In our lives, we need to give the same amount of energy to what could go great as we do to things that could go wrong. Because I really believe like the odds of something good or bad happening are about the same. So why not default? to odds are this is gonna work out well. And honestly, probably even more than that because how often does something actually turn out disastrous? What's the worst that could happen? Mm, it rarely ever does. Which gets us to point number five. Now, this might sound a little bit weird, but I don't have failures. The, the closest thing that I can think of that's a failure was selling hit the deck on QVC. I put in so much prep work. I shipped pallets of product. I went out there to get training. The person who trained me, they were like, this is gonna be a huge hit. And I hardly sold any. I had to pay for all that stuff to get shipped back. <laughs> I didn't go to business school. In fact, I never took a single 
business course. So my, I feel like my whole career has been semesters of business school where I spend the amount of time I would on a semester or the amount of money or God forbid, sometimes both, but experience is how you learn. And so that's why I don't really see my life as having any failures because they were all learning and growth opportunities. And you might be thinking, oh, but Jenny, I, I can't do that. It's, it's a lot harder for me than that. Here's a video that I want you to watch that will help you with that. That's it. Those are the five life lessons that have really sculpted the way that I work and live and how I teach my clients and audiences. So what have I missed? What is a big life lesson that changed everything for you? I wanna know.